Our next topic is going to be the English Civil War. Yesterday we talked about the fact that Charles and Parliament were having problems getting along. And that England at this time had a history of kings and Parliament not necessarily getting along. But Charles had decided to take it a step further and started arresting members of Parliament. And this upset the people a lot. Well, war began because of this problem between Charles and Parliament. It's called the English Civil War, and it began in 1642. Charles' supporters were called the Royalists, because they supported the royal government. And Parliament's followers began fighting with the Royalists. Everybody needs to understand the term Civil War. Now, some people will claim that it's an ironic term, um, and in a lot of ways it is. A civil war is a war in which a country fights itself, or when a group fights members of its own group. Um, civil oftentimes means peaceful, cordial, happy, friendly, um, and obviously a peaceful war, a friendly war, just doesn't make any sense. In America, when we hear the term civil war, we think about our civil war, which is why we titled this English Civil War, as opposed to the Civil War. Um, also, recently, Marvel Comics, the guys that did that Avengers movie, had a big fight between all of their heroes called the Civil War. Um, so you may think of that when you hear the term Civil War. Today, the English Civil War, though, is our topic. Parliament wanted a, a big, strong leader to lead them against the king. Obviously, the king comes in with some big benefits. You know, he's over the main army and all of that. Um, he has the money which is a major, major benefit. So Parliament needed a, a man's man, a real leader of men, somebody that everyone in England could look up to to take the fight to the king. So Parliament turns to a, a rather interesting character in history named Oliver Cromwell and asks for him to lead the fight against the king and the king's men. Oliver Cromwell was a member of Parliament, and he had some experience with military things. So he quickly got to work getting an army built together called the New Model Army and prepared to go and fight the king. This New Model Army was an army that he primarily was responsible for training and getting them ready. Um, Parliament helped him raise money to, to provide them weapons. And Cromwell was determined that he was going to take the fight to the king in a big way. Now King Charles I was not going to go down easily. He was determined to fight back. And you know, he was a stubborn and, and, and determined man. And quickly he got it handed to him. Oliver Cromwell and his new model army quickly defeated the Royalists. Quickly defeated the guys that were supporting the king. The king and his men had to surrender right away. And at first it looked like everything was going to be okay. The king would allow Parliament a say in government king would listen to Parliament as they gave him ideas. Everybody was going to be happy. But King Charles didn't want to give up. Even though he had already lost, even though he had already surrendered, he decided to try it all over again. The king got him and his buddies together, and they started fighting back. He ran off from kind of where they had him tucked away so it wouldn't cause problems, and he started the war all back over. And once again, Oliver went out and beat the daylights out of the king and his supporters. Cromwell was the man, and Charles just wasn't going to have it go easy. You know, I really feel kind of bad for King Charles. I like Charles. I really do. The older I get, the more I think about Charlie Sheen. When I hear the name Charles, and once again, I grew up watching Charlie Sheen in movies and TV shows, and I just want to root for people named Charlie. I look at Charlie Brown. Uh, my wife says I remind her of Charlie Brown, which it's kind of sad, but I, I have a, a sympathy for people named Charlie. Well, Charles was put on trial in 1649, and they found him guilty. My buddy Charles Sheen, the, the actor, also has been put on trial plenty of times for his escapades. And recently he's made this great commercial, which I just love, in which he's under house arrest, and so he's driving around his, his sports car, 
with this gorgeous model. And then he talks about how house arrest just isn't that bad. Well, unfortunately, Charles had already experienced house arrest. And he decided to escape and try to start the whole thing back up. So when he was caught this time and he was put on trial, and they found him guilty for not obeying the law and, and for taking advantage of the English people, he was beheaded. His head rolled. The king was dead. So what was the effect of this? Well, the success of Cromwell's war against Charles was a serious blow to the concept of an absolute monarch. No longer could a country say the king is in charge because the king is in charge and you better not do anything because if you do, the people will, people will suffer. The army will come get you. Because suddenly people saw that you could stand up to the idea of an absolute monarch and you could win. This is going to influence John Locke, who we've spent so much time talking about lately, and his belief that government is under consent by the governed. That if the government doesn't do what it's supposed to, the people should get a new government. And that if, quite frankly, if that required fighting, then you fight back. Several days ago, I had a very intelligent student ask, um, Mr. Simpson, could people really do that? Could people really fight back? Because of this concept and because of other events that are going to happen, yes, the answer becomes yes. People see that they can fight back. And this idea still happens today. There are still countries where people fight back against oppressive governments. Um, right now, probably the most famous example is the country of Syria, which is experiencing a similar concept between a all-powerful dictator um, and the people that are tired of being mistreated and, and abused by him how this is going to play out we don't really know but it's just the most recent place that this absolute government versus limited government concept is being discussed so the question then becomes who takes over the king is dead the king had a son charles the second who wanted to take over but at this point nobody wanted him in charge so oliver cromwell the leader of the New Model Army, stepped up and took over. He had himself declared the Lord Protector. Now please note, he does not allow himself to be called a king. He did not want England to remain a country ruled by an absolute monarch. In a lot of ways, though, he was the main guy in charge. He worked with Parliament, Parliament worked with him. Um, but he was the guy in charge. He was the Lord Protector. I mentioned a few pages ago that Oliver Cromwell is kind of an interesting guy, an unusual character. He belonged to a group of people who wanted to purify the church, who were very serious about their faith. Um, and one thing that he decided was a, a problem for people was Christmas. Christmas was too fun, too wild. People did wild and crazy things on Christmas. So Oliver Cromwell actually outlawed Christmas celebrations while he was in charge of England. Well, like everybody, Cromwell eventually died. His son stepped up to take charge. But his son didn't have the characteristics, the skills necessary to be in charge of a country. Nobody really cared for Ollie Jr., it was a rough time on Oliver. So Oliver quickly decided that it was time for him to leave, and he quits. And at that point, England had a problem. They had had a king. They didn't like the idea of an absolute monarch. They fought an entire war over the concept. The monarchs were beaten. They got this whole Lord Protectorate thing, whatever that is. And then all of a sudden, they have nobody in charge. So now we've got to decide who's going to take charge, who's going to step up and be the man, so to speak. Because England needed somebody. The rest of the world wasn't just going to let England, you know, have all the time it needed to figure out things. England had to have somebody in charge. Tomorrow we'll find out who.